Welcome everyone. In this video, we'll be covering all of the basics that you need to get off to a successful start with the jungle roll. And to be super clear, this is a video for players who have little to no experience jungling at all and just want to know how and where to start with the roll. In this guide, we'll be covering how to pick a champion to learn jungling with, the basics of jungle itemization, how to have a successful first clear, essentials for when and how to gank, your goals and priorities for the later parts of lane phase and mid game, as well as tons of beginner friendly tips throughout the whole thing that will give you a much higher chance of succeeding. Beyond all of that, throughout the video we'll be referring you to our other guides where you can find more intermediate and advanced information on specific topics so you know exactly where to look to keep improving in the future. To start, let's dive into everything you should know and have set up before you hit play. First, we recommend picking 1-3 to three junglers max that you'll stick with for a bit while you learn the basics of the role. Constantly changing champions and having to relearn abilities, combos, playstyles, etc will distract from mastering the basics. So which champions should you play? Well, the main thing that we recommend is playing champions that you enjoy and want to play. If you're new to the game, copying pros or high elo players is completely unnecessary. Just stick with what stands out to or interests you as long as it's a real jungler who can actually clear camps. But if you want specific recommendations, here are some great beginner friendly junglers who clear well and have easy to understand abilities. And if you find yourself dying in the jungle or getting really, really low on HP, these are beginner friendly champions who also sustain like crazy, so it'll just remove that concern for you. Anyway, once you find a champion that you want to play, we recommend heading over to probuilds.net, which is a great resource for basic info like build paths, skill orders, and rune setups. If you don't see your champion there, which can rarely happen, you can fall back to using op.gg or League of Graphs for aggregate data on how to build your champ. This might not always be optimal, but it's unlikely to be completely trolling either. As long as you copy a common build from any of those sites, you should have a really good starting foundation for your champion. Okay, now that we know which champion we want to play and how to get set up on them, let's quickly talk about Smite and jungle items. Smite is the summoner spell you will absolutely without question take every game that you jungle. It is a core part of your clear and sustain while clearing the jungle. You can get two stacks of smite on a 15 second cooldown with a 90 second recharge time per stack. At the start of the game, you'll only be using this to kill jungle monsters or the scuttle crab. However, you will start the game with either a hunter's talisman or hunter's machete. Talisman is more for champions who cast a lot of AOE abilities, while machete is more for auto attackers. Anyway, you can upgrade these items into either the Skirmisher's Saber, referred to as Red Smite within the community, or the Stalker's Blade, Blue Smite, which will allow you to cast your smite on enemy champions as well as monsters. Red Smite will cause your target to deal 20% less damage to you for 4 seconds and make your auto attacks on them leave a damage over time effect. This is a really strong spell for dueling other champions and should be used right away at the start of a fight. Blue Smite will do a small amount of damage to your target, slowing them and speeding you by a small amount. This is a great spell for ganking, allowing you to catch your target and slowing them so you can land your abilities more easily. For example, let's say you're ganking at level 5 on Amumu. You walk in, Blue Smite them to slow them down, then use that to land your bandage toss and stun them. Now we're not going to talk about the enchant upgrades for these in this video because that will just come from looking up a build. This was just to let you know what Smite does and how to use it. Okay, the last thing I want to quickly mention before we jump into the early game is jungle timers. Throughout the game, you will see these small icons appearing on jungle camps, the scuttle, or monster objectives like Herald, Dragon, etc. When the gray icon shows, that means that that will be spawning in 60 seconds. At 30 seconds, the icon will turn yellow. However, this will only happen for things that you had vision of since they were killed, such as your own camps that you took or any camps you or a teammate actually got vision of on the enemy or neutral side. Either way, these timers are hugely helpful for newer junglers, as you can always just glance at your minimap to see what's spawning soon, so keep a very close eye on these. Along that same line of thought, you can always hit tab to check the countdown on exactly when red and blue buffs will spawn, both yours and the opponents, if you've had vision of them, as well as Baron, Dragon, and Rift Herald. Alright, with all that covered, let's now talk about how to have a first successful clear of your jungle that fits your champion's strengths. So there are two primary basic types of paths, a 3 camp, level 3 clear, or a slower full clear for level 4. 
This super simple three camp level three clear consisting of both buff camps and gromp is great for aggressive early game champions with strong ganking tools who want to start killing opponents ASAP. And just in case you don't know, the red and blue buffs are given to the player that kills these monsters for two minutes. Red buff causes your auto attacks to slow your target and burn them for damage over time. Beyond that, while out of combat with enemy champions or epic monsters like Dragon, it significantly increases your health regeneration as well. Blue buff, on the other hand, provides you with essentially limitless mana for its duration as well as 10% CDR. It also provides some passive energy regen if you're playing in energy champion. Anyway, now that we know what those buffs do, you can see how powerful you can be off of a level 3 clear with double buffs, ready to kill some laners. And the other option that we mentioned was a full clear route for level 4. A route like this is usually done on champions who aren't as strong at ganking at level 3 and want to farm up to hit level 6 and unlock their ultimates or just skill for late game. Now of course there are champions who can do both. For example, Vi and Sejuani both have great ganking power at level 3, but also have super strong ultimates that they want to unlock, so you could do either with similar champions. And remember, we're not trying to teach you the fanciest, most cutting edge routes that are situational. The goal for this video is to give you simple, repeatable routes that are proven to be viable, which these are. Now, as you've seen with some of these route graphics, you can do them starting either red or blue buff crossing to the other side of the map. If you're super new and struggle to clear your jungle without losing a lot of HP, you can always just start bottom side to hopefully get a better leash from your bottom lane. Otherwise, once you're comfortable, you can start thinking about which lane you want to gank for after your route. For example, let's say you're playing Warwick here on the blue side with these lane matchups. In this game, you might want to start top side at your blue and clear towards bot lane to gank there after your route because Leona and Draven have CC and a lot of damage onto the immobile Soraka and Ash, while Garen can't do anything to lock down Nar. Again, if you're not comfortable clearing or analyzing matchups like this, just start out bottom for the leash, and that'll be just fine for a beginner who is learning the role. Now, speaking of leashes, one of the most important things that you can learn to do early in your jungle journey is to watch who on the enemy team leashed. For example, in this game, Kindred is starting out at blue and while doing this is watching the minimap. At 143, the enemy clad arrives top and the enemy bot lane doesn't show until 153. What this almost always means is that the enemy bot lane leashed their jungler at blue and that he will be pathing up to the top side of the map. This is super valuable information. If you're headed for the opposite side of the map, like in this game, Kindred can gank bottom or move around in the river without worrying about Warwick interfering. Alternatively, let's say Kindred had started red this game instead of blue and Warwick still started blue. This would mean both junglers are headed for the top side and could run into each other. And if you're a beginner Kindred and took a lot of damage clearing, it might not be safe to gank or go into the river since Warwick could be there. There's a lot of intermediate to advanced strategies that can be used off of watching a leech, so it's a great habit to build early on even if you aren't fully utilizing that information yet. Alright, moving on, one thing that we haven't mentioned yet is every jungler's best friend, the Rift Scuttler. This little buddy first spawns at 315 in both the top and bottom river and provides significant amounts of both gold and XP for how easy it is to kill. Beyond that, they don't fight back and give you quite a bit of health and mana when they die as well as leaving a speed and vision shrine in the river for 90 seconds. So the scuttle is a great way to regen health and mana while also accelerating your gold and XP. If you can, you'll always want to get at least one of these when they spawn at 315. If you're doing a fast level 3 clear, you should have time to gank first then grab this after. But if you're doing a slow full clear, you will be a bit late after 315. But you'll usually still be able to contest it if the enemy jungler is on the other side of the map or a bit late as well. Once both scuttles are taken, one will respawn randomly either top or bottom after 2 minutes and 30 seconds throughout the game and are a nice little mini objective to take when you can. The last thing I want to mention about Scuttle is that it will always run away from you, so you can direct it toward whichever nearby lane is pushing up. That way, if a fight breaks out, they might come to help you or at least stop the enemy from rotating over. Alright, and that's it for this section on your first jungle clear. If you want to know more about how to clear as fast as possible and with tons of HP left over, be sure to head over to skillcap.com where we have a huge course showing you how to clear the jungle optimally on every single jungler in the game. Also, if you're enjoying the video and have learned something, be sure to drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next upload. Now that we've talked about how to get a good first clear under your belt, let's talk about what often comes next, ganking. 
First off, let's talk about which lanes to gank, and there are a few different things that we're looking for here. First off, one super simple thing to look for is a melee versus melee matchup. These are often trading a lot, getting both sides low on HP, and are ripe for jungle influence after your first clear. Another really simple and easy way to pick a lane to gank is to just gank lanes that are pushed up. But beware that when you do this, sometimes there will be a lot of enemy minions. Early game, these can do tons of damage to you and block skill shots from landing. So you might want to wait for the tower to kill some of those minions first unless you're sure that you can land the kill. Another important consideration for where to gank is CC and how reliably you can land it. So for example, if you're playing Fiddlesticks, landing CC is pretty much always going to be easy because you just press Q, which will then allow Ari to land her charm while the target is feared. But what if you're playing a Mumu who has to land a skill shot to get CC down? Well, then maybe instead you could focus top and gank for your Pantheon. He can guaranteed land his stun, after which you can land bandage toss. So if your CC is a skill shot, try to gank for lanes that have non-skill shot or very easy to land CC if you have any, like some of these champs here. Another factor that we're going to consider when looking for a gank is how mobile our target is. This is a very simple one. It's easier to gank a level 6 Lux than a level 6 Ari with her ultimate dashes, right? So try to pick out and target immobile, vulnerable laners when you can, especially if they are pushed up in lane and you can land some CC. All right, the last crucial piece of info for deciding where to gank is that you generally want to gank for your teammates who are ahead. It can seem tempting to help out your losing teammates, but especially for newer players, this is often a trap that can go horribly. Stick to your strengths and try to snowball your winning teammates. All right, now that we have an idea of which lanes we should be ganking, let's have some quick, basic tips to improve your execution and odds of picking up a kill. First, you want to try to wrap around behind your target whenever you can. If you can get between them and their turret, they'll usually run right to you. And the reason this is so powerful is that it will allow you to get in range of your target without using your mobility. So if Quinn flashes away here, you still have E to follow. And speaking of flash, if you have the mental bandwidth, timing in enemies flash and ganking them while it's down is the easiest way to have successful ganks. If you see an enemy flash, you can hit tab and left click their summoner spell. This will place it in chat for you and your team to see. If you have timestamps for chat on, which we highly recommend, you now know when that player flashed. Flash is a five minute cooldown, so plus five minutes to that time, and you now have this big window of time to abuse that player in with reganks. Another thing you can try is waiting a few seconds to see if your target uses a key ability such as CC or movement. In this clip, Kindred wants to gank Morgana, but waits a second to see if she'll queue to push the wave, which she does, triggering his engage. You don't always need to do this, but especially against champions like these ones with long cooldown movement spells, if you wait a few seconds, not much longer, to see if they'll use it in a trade, it can really increase your chances at a kill. Alright, now that we have an idea about where we want to gank and some tips for how to be successful doing so, let's cover another key element of the jungle, monster objectives. For this video, we're just going to talk about Dragons and Rift Herald as late game objectives are more of a team or macro topic rather than jungle specific. The first dragon spawns at 5 minutes, then every 5 minutes after its death and can be soloed safely by most junglers after their first base. If you want to know more about how the elemental dragons work, we recommend checking the wiki as we won't be covering that here. Overall, dragons benefits are quite low until you can stack 4 of them for a dragon soul. So if you're new to jungling, we wouldn't recommend making them a super high priority unless you have nothing else to do or your team really wants to kill one. You'll very likely gain more by farming or ganking and practicing those skills until you have a better idea of exactly when you should be taking dragon. However, the Rift Herald that spawns at 8 minutes and again 6 minutes after its death if before Baron spawns at 20 minutes is a very powerful objective. To kill it, the first thing you'll ideally want to do is take the monster from the front and walk back out of the pit before dodging the charge. This will bring him to the outside of the pit and make him a lot easier to walk around and to hit that big, pink, glowing eye on his back for a huge chunk of damage. You'll also sometimes see him do this big windup where he raises both claws which can be dodged either by quickly moving to the herald's right or by simply taking a step back which will deliver the eye right to you. When killed, it will drop the Eye of the Herald, which you must manually pick up by walking on it, at which point it will replace your trinket. For the next 4 minutes, you can activate this by using your trinket keybind, summoning the Herald to destroy nearby turrets. For more information on how to min-max this powerful objective, check out this video here where we give a crash course on how to get a huge advantage from it. 
Now, the last thing I need to mention about epic monsters is that as a jungler, it is pretty much always going to be your job to secure the last hit on the objective with smite. To do this, you'll need to make sure that you check how much damage your smite currently does, which will go up with every level you get and save it specifically for the objective. Beyond that, on many junglers, you can combine an ability with your smite at the same time to execute from even higher HP. So in that clip you just saw, my smite does 480 damage. So at 619 HP left on the dragon, I smited and queued to execute it from there. This will help to prevent the enemy jungler or another high damage spell from stealing it away from you. This can be done on lots of junglers to varying degrees like the ones that you see here. Also, if you want to practice just your smiting without any other abilities, there's this pretty cool site called Smite Arena where you can train. Okay, we've now covered how to set up before the game, how to have a successful first clear, where to gank, as well as some execution tips to improve your ganks and the epic monsters of the rift. To finish this one off, we're going to just drop a few tips. First, one of the absolute most important aspects of jungling is your map awareness, much of which just stems from watching your minimap closely. If you're not already checking your minimap constantly, we recommend using something like this video here to build the habit super quickly. You can find the link in the description if you want to check it out. Building this habit really is a must if you want to succeed in jungling. Next up, if you're new to jungling, you might be shocked by the amount of flame and hatred thrown your way on the regular. This can be super distracting, even for a jungle veteran who has been bathed in the flame for 10 years now. So one of our biggest tips to new players would be to mute all at the beginning of the game or at the first sign of rage. You can still unmute pings if you want to see those. We really can't stress enough how much tilt you will save yourself by doing this and how much better you'll be able to focus on the game and improving. And the last tip that we have for you today is about how and when to invade the enemy jungler when you're new. This can be a really scary and intimidating topic for beginners, and if you don't know when to do it, it can have catastrophic results. So the two main triggers that we would recommend building are number one, if the enemy jungler is dead, then you can run into his jungle and steal some camps and drop a ward. And number two, if you see him on the opposite side of the map, ganking or taking an objective. Taking this opportunity to instantly either invade, gank, or take an objective is usually referred to as a cross map play and is a crucial jungle habit. Learning to jungle is a challenging but rewarding journey and we appreciate that you let us be a part of it. Once again, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.